So on the math section, you may get questions that involve number lines. I recommend learning the order of operations rules, also known as please excuse my dear Aunt Sally or PEMDAS. Now you'll also want to know how to do operations with positive and negative numbers. And by operations, I mean subtraction, multiplication, uh, division, and addition. So you may also get questions involving absolute value. Rounding factors and multiples questions may pop up. And also, I recommend studying the commutative and distributive properties. So you also may get questions asking you to find points and graph equations. You may get questions on slope. Now, over my years of doing this here on YouTube, one topic that I've heard people say came up on their test again and again and again is slope. So I do recommend studying slope. You also might get questions asking you to find the equation of a line when you know the slope and a point on the line. You could also have to find the equation of a line when given two points on a line. You also may be asked to identify if lines are parallel or perpendicular. Now, when it comes to fractions, there are a handful of things that I'd recommend knowing, right? And so if I give you a fraction and I ask you what number is in the numerator and what number is in the denominator, all right, that's the kind of thing that you'd want to know when I, I, when I put numerator and denominator, that's kind of what I mean. Identify the numerator, identify the denominator. Also, you'll want to know uh, what, what's the difference between mixed numbers, proper fractions, and improper fractions, and also how to convert between a mixed number, how to convert a mixed number into an improper fraction and vice versa. Uh, you'll also want to know simplifying. Some people also call this reducing fractions. Some people call it lowering fractions. And you can actually do this on your calculator as well. Uh, comparing fractions may show up on your test. And operations, things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division with fractions. Also, fraction decimal equivalent. So for example, the fraction 1 half is equal to 0.5, that kind of thing. So for decimals, you'll also want to know how to do operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Uh, percent questions could show up. Now, percent questions, you may get a basic calculation, or you might get a word problem, so just watch out for that. And I actually have heard students say that they've gotten percent questions on their test. No guarantee, obviously, that, that you'll get a percent question on your version of the test, but I have heard that these do come up commonly. Um, mean, median, mode, and range questions are very important to know for every subject on the test except for the RLA section. I'll probably say this again and again throughout the video, but it is important to note that mean, median, mode, and range questions are a fair game for multiple sections. Uh, scientific notation could come up on your test. Exponents and square roots are important to study. Also, probability questions could come up. Uh, you might get questions about rates, ratios, proportions objects at scale, or combinations and permutations. Uh, you also may get questions involving graphs and charts, histograms, that kind of thing, uh, and undefined expressions, also counting techniques, uh, and then also solving equations. And solving equations is a really fundamental skill uh, for the test, in my opinion. Also inequalities, translations, then quadratic equations, Systems of equation questions. Some people also call these simultaneous equations. There's a couple different names for this. Uh, and then functions. I've heard that function questions come up quite commonly. Again, there's no guarantee exactly which types of questions you'll get on your test, but I have heard that these come up often. Uh, then polynomials. And this is another topic, polynomials, that I've heard from test takers shows up on their test quite a bit. Again, said it once, I'll keep repeating it. You know, no one knows exactly which questions you're going to get on your version of the test, but I have heard that polynomials do come up quite a bit. Uh, and then also rational expressions. So you may also get questions involving distance, cost, simple interest, and then word problems. And I put word problems in bold because I would unfortunately expect to get a lot of word problems on your test. So just a heads up about that. I know a lot of people don't like word problems and I can understand why, but just a heads up, I'd rather tell you now than have you go into the test and not know that there's gonna be a lot of word problems. I would expect to get a lot. Okay, and then when, we, when, we, when it comes around to geometry, you may be asked to classify triangles. You may get questions involving finding the missing angle of a triangle. Uh, you may get questions about four-sided plane figures, and you'll want to know that internal angles add up to 360 degrees and be prepared to solve problems. 
And if you're not sure what I mean by that right now, absolutely no worries. I'm just kind of introducing some stuff that could show up on your test. Um, also, you may be asked to find the side lengths of triangles, rectangles, and polygons when you know the area or perimeter. You also might be asked to find the area and perimeter of triangles, rectangles, polygons, and composite shapes. Uh, the Pythagorean theorem questions might come up. That's basically questions involving right triangles. You may get a word problem, or you might just get a calculation involving this. Then you also might have to find the radius or diameter of a circle when you know the area or circumference. You may also be asked to find the area of a circle or to find the circumference. And I do recommend knowing the difference between the radius and diameter. I actually just saw a post on Reddit from a test taker who got an incredible score, did got a perfect score on math. And the test taker said that said to pay close attention to keywords like diameter or radius in the questions. So I recommend just knowing if you're given the diameter, how to convert that to the radius. And if they give you the radius, how to convert that to the diameter and vice versa. So also you might have to find the volume and, and surface area of rectangular and right prisms, cylinders and right pyramids. Or you might have to find the side lengths, radius, or diameter of 3D figures when you know the volume or surface area.